Isaac and his mother lived alone in a small house on a hill. Isaac kept to himself, drawing pictures and playing with his toys as his mom watched Christian broadcasts on the television. Life was simple, and they were both happy. That was until the day Isaac's mom heard a voice from above. Your son has become corrupted by sin. He needs to be saved. I will do my best to save him, my lord, Isaac's mother replied, rushing into Isaac's room, removing all that was evil from his life. Again, the voice called to her. Isaac's soul is still corrupt. He needs to be cut off from all that is evil in this world and confess his sins. I will follow your instructions, Lord. I have faith in thee, Isaac's mother replied as she locked Isaac in his room away from the evils of the world. One last time, Isaac's mom heard the voice of God calling to her. You've done as I've asked, but I still question your devotion to me to prove your faith. I will ask one more thing of you. Yes, Lord, anything. Isaac's mother begged. To prove your love and devotion, I require a sacrifice. Your son Isaac will be this sacrifice. Go into his room and end his life as an offering to me to prove you love me above all else. Yes, Lord, she replied, grabbing a butcher's knife from the kitchen. Isaac, watching through a crack in his door, trembled in fear. Scrambling around his room to find a hiding place, he noticed a trap door to the basement hidden under his rug. Without hesitation, he flung open the hatch, just as his mother burst through his door and threw himself down into the unknown depths below. Hello there everybody and welcome to my 100 subscriber special, this is X Jeffer, and as you can see from the intro and the screen right here, we're going to be doing a playthrough of The Binding of Isaac. Um, this game is was developed by uh, Edmund McMillan, the same guy who made Super Meat Boy, and the difficult, if you're in case you're wondering, the difficulty is just as high. Uh, the game is really challenging. I'm gonna hop in here and just show off the different movements and the, or the different characters and then explain the controls a little bit before I jump right into the actual game. Um, this is the character select screen. Uh, here we have Isaac, who is the main character. Uh, the stats that you see there, the left, the heart is obviously the health, the middle one is their run speed, and the one on the right is their attack power. Um, he's uh, Isaac is average and all. And he has the D6. Uh, that's unlocked if you beat the game with uh, question mark, question mark, question mark. If you beat Mom's Heart with him, you unlock the D6. So I've already, uh, I've obviously already done that. I've played through this game quite a bit. Um, the D6 is a pretty good item. It lets you re-roll the item on the screen, which will, I'll explain later if that makes no sense. Um, Magdalene is she's a powerhouse in the health stat she's not very slow and she's not very very powerful but she starts with the most health and she gets a yum heart which allows her to restore a heart after every few rooms kane has low life not the lowest but pretty low but he has really fast speed and really high attack power and he gets the luck bolt which is a really good item in that it makes your chances at winning winning things higher you know Things dropping from other things, or things dropping from things you kill, that sort of deal. You have a higher chance. Uh, Judas is the strongest starting, uh, pretty slow, but he has the second lowest uh, health fat. You might be wondering, he has no bars there. How could it be the second lowest? But you will see. Uh, he starts with the Book of Belial, when, which, when used, um, gives you extra attack power until you exit the room. Eve, she has low health. Um, low attack power, very fast speed. Uh, she gets the dead bird, which I believe it's when you get hit, a bird comes out and assists you. I'm not sure on that one. And the Whore of Babylon, which 
when you have one health or less, you turn into this creature uh, that has insane attack power and everything until you regain health. Question mark, question mark, question mark. He has negative one health. Um, he's unique in that you start the game only with soul hearts, meaning that, and the soul hearts can't be refilled. Once you get hit, you lose them and they're gone for good. He has two speed and two attack power, and his spacebar item is the poop, which just lays down a poop, and then you can hit it for some an item that a very 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 low chance of getting an item. Uh, he's absolutely the worst character to start the game with. So of course, who am I going to be playing through with? It's going to be him, and I'm. My goal is to. Um, get to Shoal, I can tell you right now that I didn't do that, this this right here is recorded live, but um, after this you're going to be seeing my playthrough, it's going to have post commentary, I'll probably mention that again, but the reason for that was because I wanted to get the best run I could, but it was taking 40 minutes a shot, and each time I died I, I would have to start over saying the same thing, so I figured post commentary would be the better bet there, um, but as you can see, movement, WASD, uh, attack, you use the directional buttons, shoot in each direction, uh, shift, we don't have bombs right now, but I'm sh I'll show that off a lot in the game, but you would use shift to place bombs. Item is spacebar, up top you can see which item you have, right there we got a heart which is useless to us since we're question mark, question mark, question mark. The top, you have the interface thing, you have your pennies, bombs, keys, the maps in the top left, your arrows, it'll show you what arrows you have at the current time. Your spacebar item, which and then the six blocks on the right of that is how it's recharging, and once it fills up, you'll be able to use it again. The poop recharges after every room, and then life. As you can see, the soul hearts are blue, normal hearts are red up there, and those would be refillable. But he doesn't get any, and that's what makes this run, doing a run with him, very challenging. But anyway, uh, oh wait, one more thing. When you press escape, you can see your stats and the items you collected. Uh, the stats from left to right are run speed, uh, attack speed, how many tiers are coming out at once, um, attack itself, and uh, range, I believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all the stats. But yeah, alright, and you guys will meet me back in just a moment with my run through where I made it the further. Alright, so here we go guys. Let's start this run. Again, this is the run that I make the farthest. Unfortunately, I'm unable to complete a sh full show run, but I do my absolute best. So, um, this game, obviously, it's kind of like a mix between Zelda with the dungeons and the items and you find and everything like that, but, uh, it's very roguelike in that everything is 100% random. Um, right there, right off the bat, we get the virus, which is poison touch. What that does is if you get touched by an enemy on the screen, it poisons them. It also like so it starts causing damage to them. It's a useful item if you do get hit, but the goal of this game is to not get hit, so you can't really take advantage of it that well, unless you're playing badly. Um, as you can see, I use the poop after every room just because there's a chance you it could drop a penny or a, any other item, and it's better to give it a shot than to just leave it go and not. I almost get hit there, I have no idea how I didn't, it looked like he touched me, but I guess he may not have. Right here in this room we get Magneto, uh, it says Magneto at the top, it's actually the item snatcher and what it does is it'll draw items towards your character on the screen, so if there is coins like this key right here, and I walk out, <laughs> not even realizing it was coming towards me, maybe it would help if I grab the damn key, um, but yeah, and what I'm showing off here or rather not showing off there you'll see uh, we'll get back to that when I actually there's secret rooms and um, I didn't find one there I thought for sure that there was one there but there wasn't um, but yeah the item snatcher will draw the items towards you which is great because if something's across a gap or behind rocks and you don't want to waste bombs then you can grab it and well right here we have I missed his name, I forget which one. They're, the four horsemen are in this game after a certain, after you've beaten the game a certain amount of times. And this is one of them. I, it's not Pestilence, I know that, I know it's not a Headless Horseman. It's not Death. I don't, uh, and I can't remember the other one. 
But whatever, you guys saw who it was. I sure as heck then I wasn't paying attention. Um, the four horsemen are unique in that they all drop the same item, except for I think one of them can drop something a little different, but he has a higher chance of dropping the item that they all do. And we'll see that in just a moment when I beat him. Unfortunately, I get hit there. I was doing so well up to that point, but that's all right. We'll still power on through this. The strategy with this guy at the beginning, you saw, I mean, the strategy with most enemies kind of just stay as far away and leave yourself as enough room to avoid the projectiles. We got the cube of meat there. Now, as you can see, there's a little cube of meat floating around our guy. Each time you pick up that item up to a maximum of four times, it upgrades itself. Um, as of right now, it's just going to stay like that. It's useless other than if you're close enough to an enemy, then it will, it'll hurt the enemy if it touches them. But, as you can see how close it is to my character's body, if you're close enough that the cube can touch them, you're close enough that you're about to get your ass kicked. The later upgrades, especially the fourth one, are extremely useful and easily some of the more powerful items in the game. This room you can avoid getting hit completely. Um, as you can see right there, I, the rock I just shot, that's actually a different color than the rest. That is unique because it will drop... It guaranteed to drop items if you blow it up. Normally it'll be soul hearts, which is absolutely fantastic if you're doing a question mark, question mark, question mark run. As you can see there, I got a, one soul heart and one key, which is kind of unfortunate. I would have preferred to just get two soul hearts, but you can't have everything you want in life. Right here we got another one. I get really lucky in this run with those. I get another two soul hearts. As you can see, we're already up to six and a half hearts. Um, the problem with it is they diminish so quickly. It doesn't matter how high you are. If you get one difficult room or one room that's giving you problems, you can be back down to two or three in a matter of seconds. That's the challenge in this game. So yeah, the game was developed by Edmund McMillan. I think I said that in the intro. Uh, the music is once again done by Danny Bennett Baranowski, the same guy that did the Super Meat Boy music, so it's just as good. The game has a very religious... Uh, theme as you can see the binding of Isaac and then the mother gets told by God to kill or take care of Isaac and so she goes to do it well gets told by who she believes is God but is actually the devil I would imagine I mean <laughs> I don't see that going any other way um, down south there the door with the key that you just saw that was a shop on the map it's indicated by the, the penny icon I, the reason I didn't go in there is because at this point I have two pennies and the least expensive item you can find is usually three and that's if it's on sale. Yes, the shop has sales and everything like that. It's lots of fun. These guys are annoying me the heck out of me just because they run away and I can never kill them. There's the drawback if you didn't know, catch it right there. The drawback of um, item snatcher, it'll draw troll bombs towards you. We just picked up the halo there, all stats up, it gives you plus one in all four stats, and it gives you plus one life. In this case, it gives me a soul heart. Normally, it would give you a refillable heart. Um, as I was saying, the troll bombs, yes, there are troll bombs in the game. Basically, they're bombs that just will explode automatically. You can't pick them up or anything like that. The items in this game have unique names. I love it. A lot of references to other games, including Super Meat Boy. A bunch of other indie games are referenced. Um, there's actually one boss. I don't believe I face him in this run, so I'm just gonna say it now. There's actually a boss called uh, Chad C H A D, just like the boss in Super Meat Boy. I thought that was pretty unique. He's also a pain in the ass to deal with. I hate him, so I'm kind of glad I didn't get him in this run. We got Monstro here. His strategy is he spits out, and uh, if you don't notice, I am playing on the. Uh, hard mode of the game because I beat the game more than 10 times or, or 10 times I beat mom's heart more than 10 times I should say um, the deal with the hard mode I get hit stupidly there the deal with the hard mode is that you face um, the colored enemies sooner you can face them as very as soon as the first floor colored enemies are basically the hard harder versions of the en regular enemies they usually have some new tricks up their sleeves and they're a pain in the ass to deal with as you can see, this guy, he just likes to spit out um, projectiles, jump around, and be all around a jerk. We get the ba super bandage there, which is awesome. It gives you plus two hearts, or in this case, plus two soul hearts. This is the devil room. 
here you have a chance of exchanging some of your hearts for items. We have the, the cat there on the left would have gave me 9 lives, but at the cost of dropping my health to 1 heart, and each time I die, it would be dropped back to 1 heart no matter how many I had at the time. The other thing was the Book of Sins, and um, I forget, I think it just has... I don't remember what it does, but it's, I don't like it. It's definitely not worth three soul hearts, not in, at ever. <laughs> there are some items that are worth it, but definitely not either of those. I've never used the, the cat anyway. I just don't see the point in having nine lives if you only have one heart. I get hit enough as it is. It's basically like having nine hearts, which I already had almost that much anyway. So yeah, I didn't even explain. You have bombs, keys, pennies. I think I explained that in the intro, but whatever, I'm going to go over it again. And, um, yep, we have another block there, another discolored block. They're really easy to notice, and unfortunately, we only get a key out of that one. And this item here, the relic, this is what led to all of the success in this run for me. Um, what this does is every fourth room you clear, it had the, enemy, the room has to have enemies, and you have to kill them all. For every fourth room, it'll drop a soul heart. That is fantastic, especially getting it as early as I did, because it'll let me get a stockpile of hearts, because I'm not going to get hit as much in these early levels. As you can see right here, you can kind of curve the bullets, not curve the bullets, but you can guide them up and down or left and right, depending on your movement. If you're moving when you shoot, they'll go in that direction. Very useful for rooms like this, where you have enemies shooting at you, and you can kind of avoid all damage. I didn't, because I'm an idiot, but you can take advantage of it and use the angled shot to kind of try and avoid that damage. There's a lot to explain in this game. I'm trying to cover everything. Hopefully I don't miss anything too important. I don't think I will. A lot of rooms have gaps like this. There are items that let you get over the gaps. Um, there's a few different ones and there's also items that let you float over the gaps, not just get over them. In here we have the arena. The arena well, there'll be a random item, either a chest, a gold chest, or an uh, item pickup in the middle of the room. After you pick it up, it starts a three-wave uh, enemy onslaught, and you have to clear all three waves before you can get out of the room. There are ways around that. There's an item that lets you see this secret room. Like, you can see the wall. You don't have to blow up the wall for the secret room, which is normally how you get into it. And you can just walk through it. So if the secret room connects to the arena, you can walk in through there, grab the item, and then walk out without having to fight anybody. But normally you have to fight three. The reason I didn't do it this time is because um, the, it was just a regular chest and the odds of me getting anything useful out of that definitely didn't outweigh the cons of me having to fight through waves of, through waves of enemies. Also, the deal with the arena is normally you have to have full health. Either full, all of your hearts have to be full, or you have to have more than six hearts at any time to get in. But because we are question mark, question mark, question mark, we get in automatically, no matter what. You can always get into the arena as soon. I buy the soul heart there just because it's always good to have more health. It's five coins or five pennies. The compass would have been a good investment, but the soul heart at this point was better was a better idea in my opinion because it lets me get hit again the compass would have let me see the icons on the map you see how there's the coin for the shop the there was a slot machine down at the bottom that I didn't even explain but I'll explain later the room with the item in it is the crown the arena is the sword and the boss is the skull if you have the compass those all show up on the, the in the map area they'll just show up automatically when you get in there uh, we have Gertie here, who is one boss that I can't stand. Um, it's kind of random. I'll either do really well against them, or I'll do horrid. Um, in this case, it's kind of a mix of both. I do pretty decent. I do decent and well enough that I don't get hit too too much. Gertie's deal is he loves to spawn enemies. We also have a, it's a colored Gertie, but in this case, I think the co colored Gertie is actually easier than the normal one because the normal one would be spawning those guys you saw at the beginning the little, I don't know, nubs that stick out of the ground, and when they start growing as time progresses, and if you let them grow large enough, they start exploding in, they send out a lot of projectiles, it sucks. This Gertie just seems to like to spawn the, uh, the flies and the advanced flies, or whatever they you want to call them. Uh, he did start spawning the, the little nubs again, 
I don't know what the heck they call those. So yeah, this boss can become a bit overwhelming. As you can see, sometimes it looks like the projectiles should be hitting me, but they don't. The the cube of mute can actually cube of meat can actually block the projectiles from hitting me, which is another advantage to having it that I didn't mention earlier. A few times there, I tried to get over there to to take out those ones, the the bigger flies, but I kind of realized that staying over here is probably the safest bet because the flies aren't coming to get me. I'm not getting shot at, and nothing's hitting me, and I can do a bunch of damage to them. So I kind of just start hanging out over here and taking out that left hand thing whenever it spawns. And then I find this spot right here where I can just stand and not move at all and I can take out, if he spawns that, I can it takes it out automatically and I can also damage him at the same time. We take him down, he drops two soul hearts which is huge, um, gives me a big boost in my health. I'm almost, I was about to say I'm almost max hearts but you can't technically be max hearts in this game. You can go above and beyond this 12 slots they give you. It won't show, but you do have the damage. You do have the health there, which is great because you can add a, you can rack up a lot of hearts, especially with the relic that I have now. It helps me get tons of hearts. So I, in none, any of all of my other runs, I never had anywhere near this amount of hearts, and I was feeling good for this run started. I was trying just not to get cocky though, because when you do in this game, one slip up ends up screwing up a lot. My biggest downfall in this game is projectiles like this. When there's a lot of them on the screen at once, I never know what to do or where to go. I got hit stupidly in this room, as you can saw, see. I got hit twice, actually, which isn't good. Took away a full heart. And when hearts aren't refillable, they... Yeah, this is where I started. I started getting like confident with how many hearts I had and everything like that. And as you can see, I started making stupid mistakes. I got hit three times in the last two rooms alone, and that's just not... A good use of one and a half hearts. Um, these guys, they just kind of run at you and you have to hit them and once you hit them enough they drop into a little puddle of meat on the ground. I'm think they kind of look like meat boys, that's what I call them. Um, they drop into a puddle of meat on the ground and you still have to hit them a few more times while they're on the ground before they die or else they, uh, they get back up. Here we have Greed, one of the seven deadly sins. You can also fight those in this game. Um, I don't think we we may have fought lost earlier I wasn't I can't remember now I know I fought her in one of the playthroughs and I think I may have forgot to mention her but yeah um, this is greed and he's a pain in the ass just because if he shoots you you drop some of your coins but he usually drops he has a chance of either dropping the 50% off steam sale coupon which lets you get 50% off of all shop items or he drops a bunch of coins which is good because you'll have some money to buy shop items. These enemies right here are probably some of my least favorite in the game. I deal with them pretty well here but the reason I don't like them is because sometimes you can get into a room with like six of them and they have this attack where they jump up and then when they land they shoot off projectile in directions up down left and right. And if you have three or four of them jump at the same time and they all land in different spots, there's projectiles everywhere and it kind of, I just hate it. I can't stand it. These enemies are really easy to deal with as long as you like roll them around the room while you're shooting them, you can handle them easily and usually you won't get hit. The only problem is if you have the, the colored version of them that are super fast, it's a pain in the butt. Again, we have an arena there. Again, I ignore it because it's just a normal chest. These guys are kind of like the hard hats or whatever they're called from uh, Mega Man uh, they won't open up until you get close to them and if you're shooting at them they won't open up and that's pretty much it yeah if you're shooting at them they just don't stay inside because they know they're gonna get hurt so yeah a lot of throwbacks to older retro game retro ish games um, and some newer games for that matter but uh I like the way they do it and See, he, he wasn't opening up there because I kept shooting at him and he knew he was going to get hurt. This room, like the, this room right here is a very hard design to get through. And sometimes you can just stay by them and wait. I knew only, he only had one hit there, so I was waiting for him so that I could just take him out. But yeah, that room design was fairly brutal because it was, the spikes will hurt you a lot. And you kind of don't have enough room to move over, maneuver around and you can't get clear shots at the enemy unless you get up right next to them and if you do they shoot at you and you end up getting hit or something like that I took care of it pretty well in my opinion so I kind of like to use the 
not the curve chop, but the angle chop by using your momentum to curve the tears. Uh, that's something I didn't even. It says arrows in the top thing, but you're actually shooting with tears, um, which is pretty unique in my opinion. The game's really messed up. I don't know where he got his ideas from. Edmund, I mean, uh, no idea. But the, I think the game's awesome. Now the reason I don't want to do a full let's play of this game is just because, I mean, it's not a traditional game and I don't feel that it, a traditional let's play suits it because the game's 100% random. If I wanted to show off 100% it would take me, it could take me anywhere from a very short amount of time to a very long amount of time depending on what items I needed in the end and what items wanted to show up for me. I mean, I've played uh, this game a lot and... Um, I still don't have all the items down. I don't, I don't have anywhere near all the achievements. There's achievements for beating the game, or getting through certain, like each of the different zones. I mean, right now we're in the caves too, and each of those areas, caves and caves one and caves two, without taking a single hit, which is crazy. I only have the first one, which I forget what it's called, but I have the first area, no hit achievement, but that's that's about it. Oh, I try for the secret room there. Normally the secret room is a, is in the room that is has the most adjacent, it's in the square that has the most adjacent rooms to it, and I bombed that wall just because it had four rooms around it, which is the max amount of adjacent room. So, more than likely it should have been there, but it wasn't, so, what are we going to do? These guys, we have another room like this, which, and we have the green colored one over here, which he shoots bigger, larger, and more damaging shots, and I think he has a bit more health, I'm not sure if that's the case, but eventually I just say screw it and I kind of run in there, uh, taking unnecessary risks, but I think it ends up paying off in the end, yeah, and he drops a penny, which is always good. The pennies are great because buying items in the shop, sometimes you can get really good items in the shop, and... If you have enough coins for them, then you get a huge advantage, but if you're not collecting enough pennies or you've spent them on other things, then it kind of sucks because you miss out on the opportunity of getting a good item. I don't even know how I missed mentioning this, but I have the bomb bag now. Uh, what that does is every couple of rooms it'll drop a bomb for me. I, I want to say it can drop a troll bomb, which kind of sucks, but I'm not positive if it can or not. Alright, we finally found our first secret room. In this secret room, we have the My Little Unicorn. Yeah, the My Little Unicorn spacebar item. This is a pretty unique item because when you use it, it'll make you invincible and colorful and everything like that. I think I use it in this boss, so you'll see, but it lets you damage the enemy by running into them. It's pretty awesome. We're fighting Chubb here. Who, see, if you use it, you can run over enemies and things like that. You're very colorful and you're a unicorn. But it lets you damage him a lot. He took a fair decent amount of damage there. I think part of the damage was actually because I have the... I actually have the... He took a stupid hit there. The poison touch from the very like second room in the game or whatever when I got it. Which lets... Because I was, I was doing damage with the My Little Unicorn, but I was also touching him, which was poisoning him, which was doing damage. This is the colored version of Chubb, which I actually find easier than, no than the normal version, just because he tends to spawn those little nubs on the ground, which are easier to deal with. Um, whereas the other one, and you can, very reminiscent, reminiscent of Zelda there, you can drop bombs and he'll eat them, and when he eats them, he explodes and it takes a good chunk of health off. Um, he dropped the soul heart and so did my relic at the same time, so we got two more hearts. In here, we have the Whore of Babylon, which I took hand, hand down. Uh, the other item was the we have to go we have to dig deeper. It'll let you skip an entire floor by digging a trap door. Um, I could have used it to very cheaply get through levels, but I decided not to just because it felt too cheap and I wanted to show off the game as much as I could. The Whore of Babylon, on the other hand, is a fantastic item if you're doing a question mark question mark question mark run. What it does is when you hit, I explained this in the intro because one of the characters actually starts with that. Um, but what it does is when you get, get to about one ha one heart or less, you turn into this creature that has um, very highly increased stats, uh, power, and everything like that. And yeah, it's just increased power, and he, he does a lot of more a lot more damage. But when you're playing as 
question mark, question mark, question mark, he technically has no real hearts. So the effect is active all the time. It never runs out. It's a unique thing that I didn't know for the longest time, so I never used it for him because if I was at a heart or half a heart, it was going to be a failed run anyway, so why even bother? But yeah, now that I know that, I try to grab it as much as I can. These guys are a pain in the ass. You can only hit them from behind. Kind of another feature that reminds me of Zelda. I know a lot of things have. We get a quarter there, which gives us 25 pennies automatically. Very good boost if you're using the shop a lot. Gives you enough coins to buy. I could right now I could buy out an entire shop, even no matter what's in it, pretty much. I get hit stupidly twice there by those guys. Those damn stationary shooting things. By the way, things like that they stop working after you clear the room completely. We have another discolored block here. Hopefully some more soul hearts. We'll see though in a moment. Yeah, we get two more soul hearts, which is great. It puts us at full health, or well, 12 hearts. And I, like I said, I believe it goes over that maximum, but I don't know if I actually even show that off because I'm sure I get hit. This room's a pain. I hate the rooms that have the flies that shoot in them. I don't know why, but I always walk into, walk into their shots. Looks like I might not in this one though, so I won't complain. As you can see, yeah, you want to shoot everything that's on the ground. Another arena, another regular chest, another wasted room. We find I almost walked out there, which would mean I would have had to waste another bomb. We have a slot machine there. I think I, I show them off later, so I'll explain them then. I, I blew it up, and I got a pill. Pills are, you use them with Q, and they give you some random effect. Right there, I got the O oh No pill, which drops six troll bombs, or five or six troll bombs from you. So you kind of just run around and they'll drop and you want to avoid them because they'll do a lot of damage if they hit you. Here we have a the first time we encounter a boss in a regular room. I get it very lucky because the room is easy enough and I just stand behind that hole and he can never get to me. I think we're actually above the maximum health now. I think I just picked up another soul heart, which is pretty cool. Um, we had chest in the last room. I didn't feel like bombing to get it. And then we had the slot machine. Here we have Envy. Another of the seven deadly sins. This is my least favorite of the seven deadly sins, just because as you're killing him, he splits off into smaller and smaller heads. I effectively use my little unicorn here to basically destroy this boss. Um, but normally that boss is a lot harder because if you end up exploding all the heads into the smaller versions right off the bat, you end up with a bunch of things bouncing around the room, almost impossible to avoid. But we handled it really well there. So I can't say that I complain. I end up eventually bombing for that chest anyway, and I got, what was it, 4 pennies out of it. So that's actually not too bad. I'm up to 43 pennies, which is crazy. I was about to bomb there for the secret room, and then I realized that uh, I actually already had the secret room, so it would have kind of been a waste. I thought I had killed that guy in the top left corner already. I don't know how I don't get hit in this room. I really should have. But I thought I had killed him, and so I walked away, and it turns out I didn't, and then he started shooting at me. Like a jerk. These brains are, they're really annoying because that trail they leave around, if you walk on it, it actually hurts you. And sometimes it's hard to notice whether it's still there or not. I'm not sure how the hitbox works, so like, see as this room can be a real pain, because if they corner you, then you really have nowhere to go. You can't run away into the, the blood, because the blood hurts you. And sometimes, usually they're really easy to deal with, especially if you can get them on the same side of the room like I did right there. But sometimes they can just be a real pain in the ass. We got these guys in a room again, but this time we have two of them together instead of just one of them. These guys are pretty much really easy to deal with. They kind of remind me of Zelda too. I don't know why. A lot of the stuff in this game reminds me of Zelda. Maybe that's just me. Here we have, I'm going to pick up two items, we got the steam sale that I was talking about earlier which will half or cut the price of everything in the shop in half. And I say screw it, I have so many coins I go back for that and I get strength which is pretty useful, it increases your damage in the current room until you leave that room, very useful for bosses. But the other item, other item I grabbed was the ladder which lets you walk across holes, one, one space holes like I just showed there. Very useful, um, there's a few different things you can do with it, like you can hide, if there's a hole in the corner, you can just hide in the corner, and if an enemy, his only means of attacking you is walking into you, then he won't be able to walk into you, and it makes you practically invulnerable for that room. 
Here we have Monstro 2, which is the upgraded and advanced version of him, and he's a complete douche, and I just hate this guy to be honest with you. Uh, what his attacks, he does the spitting again, but he also, or he does the laser rather now instead of spitting, and he jumps, and when he lands, the first time he lands, he will shoot off in, is it 8 directions? Yes, 8 directions I believe that is, but the second time he jumps and lands, he drops 4 of these these beetles that when you kill them they explode in the up down left and right directions sometimes he'll jump and land and then he'll shoot all of the beetles with his own laser and that'll send off bullets in every whatever direction and so yeah there's friendly fire they can kill their own guys which is great but sometimes it can end up backfiring I get hit there like an idiot I don't know what the heck I was thinking I get hit a lot in this boss fight see he can shoot and that almost ended up backfiring and hitting me, but they didn't, luckily. But yeah, I get hit a lot in this boss battle. I really shouldn't have because his pattern isn't all that hard. He jumps around for a lot there. I get the belt, which increases movement speed. Always the good. It's always good to be able to move fast just in case you have to backtrack and just to get out of the way of enemy projectiles. When your speed is maxed, though, you, walk, you run real fast, and sometimes that can end up being a detriment. Uh, a lot of times I end up running into enemy projectiles because I'm just moving too fast. Right there the relic and the bomb bag both dropped items at the same time. Which was great. I got a soul heart and some bombs. Right here we have these enemies that I uh, I don't want to comment on what they look like. You guys can talk amongst yourself about that. Um but they shoot they they'll shoot when they finally when you walk past them, whatever direction you walk past them in, they'll aim up that way, start charging a laser and then shoot it. So the best way to deal with them is to get them all to shoot in one direction, like all of them to shoot up and then attack them from behind. Um, there I used bombs to kill those guys. And um, that ended, that actually works really well because then you don't have to worry about getting behind them because that's a pain in the ass sometimes. Right here we get the spider bite. This is actually a really good item and I'm really glad I got it. What it does is it gives your tears a slow effect on the enemies. So Every time you hit an enemy, you have a chance of slowing them down, slowing their movement speed, which is great. Right there, we have the doctor's remote. Or no, it's teleport. I'm sorry. It's not the doctor's remote. There's another item that looks very similar. Teleport, what it does is it's a spacebar item that when you use it, it'll teleport you to a random room on the floor. I got, here's pride, the fourth of the deadly sins we're fighting in this. I actually show off a lot of the deadly sins. This is great. Um, pride is one of the easiest. I can't believe I got hit there. His two attacks already shoots off in the corners like that. I used the telepill there, or I used the pill there to find out what it was. Turns out it was a telepill, just like teleport teleports you to a random room. I pick up the, I buy the pill there like an idiot. It was a complete waste because it was a speed down pill, which isn't a good pill. So of course I'm not going to use it. But yeah, Pride's the easiest. He has that four corner directional diagonal shot thing, whatever you want to call it, and he also has an attack where he drops its four or five troll bombs around the room and you just have to avoid them. One thing I learned in this room as I was shooting there, I found out you can actually slow the guys in the middle there, the guys that are shooting at you. The slow effect actually works on them if you shoot them. I, didn't, I never knew that until just recently. Those brown or black guys that are running around the room, those with bombs, uh, after you do enough damage to them, they'll explode. They can be a real pain in the butt if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time when they actually explode. Right here we have another room with these guys, uh, there are two smaller ones and a slightly larger one, the slow effect are really effect effective on these guys. I realized actually most of the way through the fight that I, one of the abusive things with the ladder is you can just stand on the holes there when you're fighting those guys and they won't be able to get to you because they just charge at you. Like an idiot here, I go through the boss room, I didn't mean to do that because I still wanted to explore the rest of the floor and I was going to take advantage of everything that was there. This is mom, the first fight against her. It's her foot pretty much and her eye and every other part of her. Strategy here is stay in the middle because if you're on the one of the four sides, a fist will come out and punch you. I don't know if I show that off at all. When you see the shadow, move. If you don't move, uh, she'll step on you and it does a lot of damage. You can use the foot to your advantage actually to take out all these enemies. If mom steps on them, it'll kill them instantly, which is great because sometimes some of these enemies are really, really hard to deal with, but other times they're not. 
so yeah aim at one of the corners where she's peeking out or one of her body parts is sticking out I, I don't know what you want to call them and while you're doing that just avoid all the enemies easier said than done I know I blow up that rock I get a gold chest which gives me a plus health item and then the plus health item there so I get two hearts out of that which is great but yeah it's easier said than done that boss fight if you're just starting the game out and you don't have the like the hard mode unlocked that boss fight's actually easier than the second boss or the second fight with her um, but now that I have the hard mode unlocked the next the second fight of her is oh man it's a doozy you guys will see I'm this game is so aggravating you don't even want to know how many attempts I gave at this before I finally got one that I felt was okay to show I was trying to get one where I would beat everything and show off as much as I possibly could but I realized that maybe I can just leave it at this for the 100 subscriber special and then that leaves me room, room for improvement in the future if I ever decide I want to do another playthrough for you guys. Uh, I obviously know that the secret room is there because I have the, um, I have something that shows me that it's there. The map? I must have the map. Yeah, I don't have the compass because it's not showing everything else. Those guys are pretty easy to deal with, they'll just jump up and down and when they land they shoot off in the four directions. Right here we get uh, Tammy's head, I'm not sure exactly what that does but it, it's useless. <laughs> A lot less useless than my little unicorn, which is actually one of the more useful spacebar items. There's definitely one that's a lot better for question mark, question mark, question mark is the Book of Revelations. And what that does is every six rooms you can use your spacebar and it'll give you a soul heart. Pair that with the relic and you have a lot of soul hearts coming in. Every four rooms you get one from the relic and every six rooms you get one from the book of revelations. It's actually a really good combo and I was hoping to get it here. But unfortunately I don't believe I do. But what are you going to do? These rooms can become a little bit of a pain when you're down to the last one and he's being a jerk and doesn't want to come near you. We get him there though. In this room, that guy in the bottom is an asshole. Uh huh. When he's a mirror image of you, and he will just shoot in the same direction, or well, I guess the opposite direction. It's technically the same direction, right? I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But getting to kill him is usually a pain in the ass. But I actually have some a real cheap way here of killing him. You can just stand right on top of him if you have the cube of meat, and you can use the cube of meat to attack him. That's another reason that I really don't want to do a traditional let's play of this. I was gonna go explore more of the rooms, but I decided I'll just go for the boss. Why risk it? I'm I want to get done with Mom's heart. But the other reason why I didn't want to do a full let's play of this is because let's plays are great because people can play along with you and they can experience the same thing and they can use your even if they want they can use your playthrough as like tips and tricks and a guide sort of to the game. But in this game, there's no guide because everything's 100% random. You could be playing along with me and you're going to get different items than me, you're going to get different enemy spawns, you're going to get different floors, different bosses, so you can't really use my game for tips. You can, I guess, in a sense, because I can give you strategies for the enemies and things, but I don't know, I kind of just like it as a, I can do playthroughs whenever I feel like it. We get our second cube of meat, and now the, the meat that was floating around us is now a head. Um, if you don't notice the resemblance, it's actually um, the head of Meat Boy. Yes, the cube of meat, if you kill the four horsemen in a row, after the third one, you'll get a little meat boy that walks around with you, and he'll go and attack enemies, and he does a pretty decent amount of damage. When you get the fourth one, the size of the meat boy, like, doubles or triples, and he will do a ton of damage to enemies. It's very useful. Unfortunately, I didn't get it here, but the meat boy that are, the head is floating around now, if you're not, if you didn't notice it, uh, it's shooting bullets one, while I shoot. So it gives me a little bit of extra damage power. The secret room, that's the biggest item you can get out of any secret room. It's the 1-Up Mushroom. Just like in Mario Brothers. The 1-Up Mushroom, when you die, you will spawn back um, in the previous room and you get another shot at it. The deal with it though is say you had 10 hearts when you... Er, the deal with it with... Um, question mark question mark question mark is you only spawn with three soul hearts so that kind of sucks I believe if you're playing as one of the guys that has refillable hearts you'll keep as many hearts as you had I'm pretty sure don't quote me on it but I'm fairly certain that's right um, that boss was pretty easy he kind of just stood there and took the damage but he kept unleashing those bombs which could have been become could have become problematic we have um what's his face here chub 
Yeah, it was Chubb. We have him in a normal room. Um, yeah, once you get to a certain floor, you start facing bosses in normal rooms. Which is a pain in the ass because, you know, bosses are should be for boss rooms. But it adds a lot of challenge to the game because not only are you facing the bosses at the end, you're facing the bosses here. And, you know, just wait. Just wait till you see it later. I get my a when I get my ass handed to me, we have the simplest room ever. That's the easiest room I've ever seen this far into the game. I don't think it'll ever happen again, but I wasn't going to complain. This is a pretty fairly easy room here. That's their other attack. They can shoot out this green bomb-like thing, and when it hits the ground, it explodes. And then it'll leave a puddle that I believe will hurt you if you walk over it for a short period of time. We have a colored version of these guys, which shoots out bigger bullets. Other than that, though, I don't think he has any other mechanics. Sometimes they add new mechanics, sometimes they just make them more powerful. It all depends on the enemy. Fairly easy room, we took care of it. Right here, we jump into an arcade for the first time. The arcade's awesome. It has three different machines each time you come into it. The one on the top left's the slot machine. You spin the thing, and depending on what comes up on the slots, you get an item. There, we got coins, we got bombs before that. The guy in the middle, it's like those games where you move the thing around and you pick it. And if you're right, he gives you whatever's under it, but if you're wrong, you don't get it. Um, right here, I show off a little a little trick. Normally, that thing will take hearts away from you, which is useless. It's question mark, question mark, question mark, because it'd be a waste to use your hearts there. But if you use the My Little Pony and run into it, you actually, while you're invulnerable, you can keep using it, and it won't take any hearts away from you. The guy, the guy in the bottom middle... You may think that you can watch it and see where the item's going, but it's the same animation every time, and it, you just it's a random chance whether you get it or not. Um, the luck foot that... Um, is it Kane? The luck foot that somebody starts with at the beginning of the game, I think it's Kane, that he starts with will actually give you a 50% chance to win these games instead of the lower chance that they are now. I don't know what the lower chance is. You can use bombs to explode slot machines, you can use bombs to kill the guy that's running that game and his game itself, and you can use the bombs to blow up the blood donation machine. Uh, very useful because you can sometimes get really good items out of it. At this point I start to realize that I have a ton of bombs, so I start using them to see if maybe there are some soul hearts in these rocks. Uh, once you hit this, the womb here, the rocks don't, there are no discolored rocks, it's kind of just, you have to randomly guess or just try to see if they're soul hearts or not. I get a soul heart drop from the relic, which is awesome. Uh, that arena had that item there, it would have given us plus 10 bombs. Would be useful at the beginning of the game, at this late in the game, I have enough bombs and it's really not that useful, so I didn't go for it because it's not worth the risk. I could have ended up facing three bosses in a row or something ridiculous if my luck wasn't good, which it never is, so I probably would have ended up facing that. We're still doing very well. Look at that amount of health at this point. I mean, I just got hit there, but still, I'm almost at 12 hearts, which is fantastic. Here we're fighting two bosses. This is Sloth, another of the seven deadly sins. I think I've shown five or six of them already, but we're facing two at the same time. Yeah, it gets pretty crazy when you have to face two bosses in the same room. And sometimes you can face two bosses that are a lot harder than these guys. Sloth, he shoots the green pellets that will explode and do a lot of damage if you're in their radius. And his other attack is to spawn the enemies that will run towards the white, the little white guys that run towards you if you are on the same line of path as them. Uh, we get the Temperance card there. Temperance, I believe, teleports you somewhere. Maybe it teleports you to the shop, I want to say. I'm not positive, that's just a guess. I think it teleports you somewhere though, but I'm not sure where. And I'm honestly not sure if it really is a teleport. I hope so though. Because I'm saying that. Still looking for the boss room. Of course it's in the very last corner that I'm going to look at. Uh, it always ends up being like that. Here we have one of these jerks again. Who shoots at the same. We're going to use the same strategy. Except we have the head now. Cheap strategy. But I don't care. Uh, we have a pill in there. Probably not worth going for. I believe that pill is probably the... Um, tears down or whatever the, the deal with the pills is they're completely random from playthrough to playthrough but once you figure out what they are in your playthrough they stay the same here we have mom's heart the final boss in the main game but not the uh, final boss overall 
strategy or the the thing here pattern here is the thing will pop down because it's normally a heart and you'll fight it but because i'm in the hard mode it's actually basically what it's supposed to be is isaac in the womb and that's what you're facing um he'll pop down for a moment she'll pop down for a moment spawn an enemy or a boss in the main game before you beat it 10 times it's only enemies you won't fight bosses but now because i'm in the hard mode he can spawn bosses so I keep, of course, I keep getting bosses. What I do is I try to drop a bomb in the middle and then use it to hit both the womb and, or the heart and, um, whatever they spawn at the same time. But they'll pop down for a little bit, drop an enemy. Once you kill the enemies, that's when they start, he pops back down again. He won't pop down until the enemies are dead. These guys are jerks. They're lasers. They're very reminiscent of Zelda. Um, the guys, the, the staff, Staphos? Staphos beams, Staphos guys. I'm sorry, my Zelda terminology isn't the greatest. But yeah, so this boss, up to here, it's not that difficult. We're about to get, once you get into her, her or him, I keep refer changing the gender of this thing. Because it's Isaac there, but it's supposed to be Mom's heart, so I'm going to refer to it as her. Once you get her to about a third of the health, it gets crazy. Um, here's one boss we didn't fight throughout the main game or throughout the game. That was the Duke of Flies. I destroyed him there. His thing is that he drops flies though normally. I didn't give him a chance to. The slow effect really helps here. We get Chubb again. This is the what third, fourth time we fought him in this game, this playthrough. So yeah, he's because he's getting. I'm getting sick of him him a little bit. The bosses actually aren't usually that bad to deal with, but if you get a bad boss spawn. You can kind of get screwed over in this fight. We're a little under halfway health here. And now this is where it get cra gets crazy. Start spitting these out real crazy. I get overwhelmed at this point. I take a lot of damage here. About three hearts in no time. Um, and he stays down. Or she stays down completely for the rest of the thing. So you can shoot at her. But she's going to continually spawn enemies. Whether you're killing. Or I think whether you kill the rest of them or not. Or maybe you do have to kill them before she spawns the new one. So it might be useful to just leave a random easy enemy just sitting there. But we take her down, which is great. She doesn't drop an item, but a trapdoor opens. There's the hell room up there to lead to the same place. A trapdoor leads to Shoal. Shoal being the hardest floor in the game and leading to the penultimate boss. Um, I think I'm using that correctly. I have no idea. Probably not. Um, but this floor is crazy. Just wait and see. I don't make it very far, and I apologize for that, but maybe I can do a Shoal run in the future. Shoal is the devil, the guy who was ordering Mom around to kill you. Spoiler alert. Hopefully you guys don't mind. But yeah. <laughs> this room kicks my ass. That guy, sh not only does is he a mirror image of you, but he shoots split shots instead of just shooting one the same bullets you do. So he's a freaking cheater. He's supposed to be a mirror image, but he's not. He has his own damn attacks. But I, I get killed a lot here because I just don't know how to deal with it. I'm fighting a boss at the same time. This is this guy is a boss. It's greed. Two greeds and that guy in the room at the same time. I'm just completely overwhelmed. If it was the two greeds, it'd be another story. It'd be an easy room. But two greeds and a guy that's shooting in the same direction as you, I get my ass kicked there. The one-up mushroom lets me come back. I'm obviously not going back in that room. So I go up here. These guys are a pain in the ass. These guys will shoot at you just like the other enemies. They shoot over items in the room, but that's the trick. When you kill them, they're the colored version, the harder version of this enemy. And when you kill them, they explode like a bomb. Uh, they're, these guys are just overall a pain in the ass to deal with. We take them out. But I think I only last one more room. Yeah, I walk in here and there's two bosses here. I don't I forget what that boss is called, but they kick my ass. So yeah, that's as far as I made it. Unfortunately I wasn't able to show you guys Shoal, but that leaves room for improvement in the future. Hopefully you guys enjoy this playthrough. I hope I explained everything as accurately as I could, and I hope I didn't forget anything too majorly. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and if I know the answer, I'll definitely answer it for you. Um, and just the final thing, thank you so much for everybody who subscribed. I'm thrilled to have this many people watching my videos. I'm not one to worry about subscriber count, but it's great to know that after I put a video up, there's going to be at least, you know, a, a bunch of people that are going to comment on it and interact with me. And I just love that. That's what I'm in this for. Other than the enjoyment of playing video games, I like the interaction between viewers and me. 
and just talking and getting suggestions or giving hints to them and hearing their stories about playing the games. I just love that. So if you have any stories about this game, feel free to let me know. But yeah, that's going to call for the 100 subs special. I know I'm at like 160 some odd, which is fantastic. I'm in awe. I never thought I would reach 100 ever, let alone this quickly. Um, so yeah, I think there probably won't be another special for a while. I don't know what the next count's going to be, and I'm not too worried about it. If I ever get there, I get there, but if I don't, I'm not too worried about it. So yeah, thank you everybody for watching this video and all of my videos, uh, and thank you very much for just being there in general. Uh, so I'll see you in my next video.